We'll bring the uh, Berlin Select Board meeting of June 26th to order. Um, on the agenda is the <coughs> approval of, oh, excuse me. I'm not used to doing this yet. Uh, open session public meetings are subject to being videotaped. Your image and voice may be recorded. <laughs> All right, we've got the June 12th uh, open session meeting minutes. Do I hear a motion to approve? No, I had a comment on them. Um, okay. There's quite a few attendees that are not listed. So should they be listed per open meeting law? Because... And there's other groups that I know send around sign-up sheets, but I notice that we don't. I just want to follow protocol. If they're supposed to be there, then, and if they're not, then. I, I don't honestly know. Um, Typically, um, I list, you have to list the board members, yeah. obviously. Um, and then the attendees you can list. It's not a requirement. So it's up to how you guys would like to have it done. Maybe in a, in like that type of meeting where we had so many people, we should have sent around correct a paper but we didn't so it, it, it I guess it's not required but I, the, you know I think it's a good idea if we're having a big well if it would be a public hearing then right. we would definitely you know want to do that since this was more just discussionary mm -hmm. I think you're okay okay all right well then given that um, I'll make a motion but yeah definitely Maybe next week we can talk, well, in the next two weeks we can talk when Scott comes back about putting a policy in place for that. All right. So you made the motion. I did. I will second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And we're down to general public comment. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um... We will start with our fire and EMS uh, general department update. All right, thank you. Mike. Oh, I get to come sit up there? All right. <laughs> the hot seat. The hot seat. Now you're closer. <laughs> when we do the Spanish Inquisition, now I can just reach out and touch. That's perfect. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, before you have the fire uh, report for this month, or for the month of May, excuse me. Um, Emergency responses have stayed about the same, um, where we did about 57 responses for the month, averaging about 1.8 responses a day. Um, they're broken down by categories for you. Um, we've seen an increase in the severity of calls that we've had that seem to be continuing since my arrival. Um, with having yet another building fire, a couple of serious car accidents up on the highway, and a few uh, labor-intensive uh, EMS calls um, throughout the town. Um, I kind of noted that in my activity uh, that I wrote to you, um, just the, the severity of the incidents have increased. Um, luckily, the brush fires have seemed to have stopped now with all the rain that we've gotten, so <laughs> knock on wood, that'll continue for the rest of the summer. Uh, members of the department conducted training on the airbag stabilization and forceful entry. Um, we were really lucky in being able to borrow a training prop from uh, Devon's Fire. Very expensive prop that they have, but uh, you know, with a lot of the departments that we share that uh, materials with, we were able to get a lot of training with that with some of the wood that we used to put into that doorway. Um, the police department actually uh, came over to utilize that a little bit too, just on the forceful entry aspect. Um, we call it destructive training where it's designed with the boards that we put in there and the wood that we use where it breaks apart, kind of like a real door does. So it gives some great, um, if you will, training experience for the firefighters and stuff to get their hands on to that. Um, the other thing that we did was the airbag training um, that we had received that through uh, the warrant that was raised um, uh, last year and stuff and for vehicle stabilization and some of the machinery uh, technical rescue that we can have with the airbags. Um, we were actually to, able to get some decent training with that and get hands-on with it and to move some of the vehicles and stuff and get that onto the apparatus and get it in service. Um, during uh, the month of May, we were able to actually conduct a couple of interviews um, with some call firefighter applicants that applied to the department. So we're moving forward with two of those currently that uh, hopefully we're going to be able to onboard them uh, throughout the summer here and, and get them hired and, and get them on the department and start training them. Um, 
as far as town wide, we've seen an increased interest in the home safety inspections that we've been doing. Um, we did s conduct several of those in May, um, and we're advocating for those for the high risk population and any resident that uh, may want to have a safety inspection completed on their home. There's no charge for that. Um, and word of mouth seems to be spreading with that and stuff too. We've got some people that were switching out some of their smoke and carbon monoxide detectors and stuff that have uh, you know been failing or are out of date. Um, so that that's going well. Um, and we're getting the crews out in the uh, community and stuff to kind of educate them on what we have to offer and what we're doing. Um, we participated in the uh, field day uh, at school and stuff, which was really nice uh, to be out there with the kids and stuff and interact with them and some of the parents as well. Um, and that's pretty much my update for this for the month of May. So how many positions are we still or are you still down ish? Probably about four that I'm still down. Four to five positions right at the moment. The safety inspections, what is included or what kind of things are you we, we kind of go through and kind of depending on what's going on, we have we kind of look specifically for the smoke detectors and the carbon monoxide to make sure those are in place because those are the biggest thing that we think we can have an impact on for, um, you know, preventing a tragedy from occurring. The other things we'll take a look at is depending, um, you know, who's in the house and stuff. If there's at-risk children and stuff, we'll have the conversation about transportation to the hospital. Uh, for some children that have specialty, uh, you know, uh, uh, doctors that they see at Mass General, uh, or um, you know, one of the hospitals in Boston. A lot of the questions that we'll get is, can we transport there? And the, and the simple answer is yes, if that's the appropriate facility for them to go to. The more complicated answer that comes into is if somebody is being seen there for a gastrointestinal problem and they break their arm, they're probably not gonna get transported there because they're not related. However, if there's something going on with that patient where they're having um, some type of a, a gastro problem, that would be the best facility for them to go to. And you know, we'll kind of go over that with the parents to talk about how we would go about doing that and arranging that transport. Um, the other thing we'll take a look at is uh, for some of the elderly population is the placement of throw rugs. They tend to be the number one um, culprit for a hip fracture for somebody falling. Um, and in that same, you know, uh, uh, vein is the, you know, the ability for them to be able to call 911 if they do have a fall incident where they don't have to lay there for a long period of time. It's making sure they have a way, whether it's through one of the pendant alarms or a fall alarm that's on the watch or a phone or that type of thing. Um, and kind of going down that same line is looking at any of the um, assist devices they might have in the house where they might need to have like a grab rail placed um, or some of the... Uh, things that we're aware of that may make it easier for them to live in the home, um, you know, to be able to move around and stuff and not have to, you know, feel like that, that, that they're, they're in need of going someplace else. Um, so we'll look around the house for uh, ways out for them type of things, uh, what might prevent that. Some of the, uh, out on the exterior, if any of the brush is preventing us from being able to see the house number, that type of thing, that we can kind of cut that back and open it up so that in the middle of the night at 2 o'clock in the morning we can see the house number clearly. Those are some of the things that we'll look at. Hmm. Do you give out the one of those red things, the file of light that you yes. stick on the fridge? Yep. Yep, we have those so that we'll go over that with them as well to explain what needs to be in that and stuff and to, you know, kind of go through how to fill that out and the, and the information that we would need that we give to the hospital and that kind of stuff too. A file of light? Yeah, it's, like, it's a red <clears throat> thing, and it, it, a magnet, and it's got what, like your name and yep. all your medications so that in the event yep. they can just, and we, they, no. It's got everything there. It lists your allergies, any medical history that you've had with heart problems or diabetes or anything like that. And it helps Good. in the event that <laughs> someone is unconscious that we can quickly look through that. And if it's a low blood sugar, we can it, it, because they're diabetic, we can go right, right to that and hopefully, you know, get them back so that they're awake and able to talk to us. Um, the other thing I'll have on there is emergency contacts so that we can get in touch with somebody right away and find out any of that other stuff as we transport them to the hospital, at least and inform them as to what's going on. So it's a great program to have. Um, you know, as I said, it lists their allergies, the current medications they're on, emergency contacts, all of that. Hmm. Abby has them downstairs. Yep. Oh, okay. Any luck on a structural engineer for the space over there? Yes, actually, I have. I'm happy to say that on Thursday, I'll actually be meeting with an architect to actually talk about go over the plans that we have and to actually, uh, you know, take a look at what we need and to kind of start working with them on being able to uh, develop something. So kudos to the town administrator because her contacts were able to get us. Thank yes. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yep. Hey, and then one thing I thought of you. So when you were here last week or 
whenever you were here, you were talking about the old his, the fire trucks, yes. what to do yep. with them. Well, look at that, Skippy-Doo. Oh, hey, how about that? Situate, local students restore historic fire truck in Situate. Hmm. So uh, it took 40 students, they were involved. Uh, it was a pumper truck, which dated back to 1924. Interesting. Uh, a lot of research, even to the point of where it talked about uh, the paint code. Yep. They had a paint code that was used a long time ago and was able to cross-reference it to get a new code to match the color. Um, they gave it back to the town when it was done. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite sure we want to go there. Um, but um, uh, it said It'd that... It'd be a good project. Yeah, but yeah. it said that the, uh, the vehicle's been penciled in for several parades. So I just yeah. thought that that was kind of cool that you were talking about no, it. No, that is... And it was, on the, it was on the news. So, yeah, sit yeah. to it. I'll have to reach out because that's one of those things that's really cool. Yeah. Uh, just, to, you know, some of the local high schools around here, I know if they have an automotive section, that may be something they're interested in where it's... You could check with us a bit. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly what I'm thinking because it's not anything that needs to be done like you know by next year they, right. it took them three or four oh, years to do it but so it benefited nice. the, the kids and learning you know on yeah. that restoration part it would be great yeah i mean of course it didn't talk cost mm -hmm. and who foot the bill yep. but just yeah right. that it was a vocational school south shore technical school yep. but i'm thinking that's Is that the same sort of truck we have 1924 it's the same era yeah the knot that we have is the same era mm. as that one so um yeah it's just a and it's the same thing there's paint codes that go with it which we have all of that stuff which yeah. is the interesting part we have the original date when that left the contract that was made for it, kind of where it came from mm -hmm. so we can track all that down and yeah, it's kind of interesting. Yeah. I never thought that. I did estimate might consider it. Yeah. Yeah, so that was just a, a timing thing that you mentioned it, and then it shows, shows up. up. That's great, actually. So. Yeah. Timing is everything, as they say. Timing is everything. <laughs> yeah. That's Anything else, Peg? Mm -hmm. No. Let you off easy. All right, yeah. thank you. All Appreciate right. that. Good to see you. All right, good to see you guys. Not yet. Okay. I'm about two or three weeks out on that. It's coming. All right, All right. bringing down you're, duct tape. You're, you're the saying. second person to ask me today, so <laughs> <laughs> it is a priority. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. <laughs> All right, and we also have with us tonight uh, Victoria from our Council on Aging. Hello, everybody. Hi. Yeah, there's no computer, no PowerPoint. It's just me. That's Sorry. okay. Aww. We're happy to have you. <laughs> we like having you, just as you are. It's okay. Maybe next time. We'll think She's about just it. shocked. That's all. I am. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Um, so where to begin? Uh, just uh, general updates. So for um, for the Council on Aging, we are still doing our van rides. We're still doing Tai Chi yoga. That is planning to continue on during the summer. Um, we are doing a blurb in the powder house that has been delivered to the post office today so people should be getting by next week um, farmer market coupon requests if anybody um, they're targeting seniors specifically but if anybody um, who are again trying to target people who are lower income anybody's interested reach out to me directly in general um, just some public benefits information Mass Health, the basically state Medicaid program, they're doing a year-long redetermination process for all of the two million people who have been on Mass Health. The reason why this is going on is because during COVID, the state did not do any redetermination processes and they did not kick anybody off of Mass Health because mm -hmm. they wanted people to maintain health insurance coverage. Um, since the national emergency has lapsed, they are now in the process of doing a redetermination process of all two million people who've been on Mass Health because one has not been done in three years. Um, the reason why I say this is because we do have people in our community under 60 and over 60 who are on Mass Health, and we just want people to be aware of it because, for generally speaking, when Mass Health is doing a redetermination, what they do is they look at your income, your assets, and then they also look at to, to, to see if you've had any changes. So like, have you moved any um, like email changes, phone number changes, emergency contacts, things of that nature. And unfortunately, they're being very stringent and they're telling people that if for any reason they think that you were gonna be denied, you only have about 14 to 21 days to appeal. 
So it's a very tight window. So what we're trying to do is um, for each issue of the powder house going out, and this will continue on, um, we're putting blurbs in because I want people to be on the lookout for it. Normally, if people qualify for one other public benefit, like a food stamps, like public housing, um, you know, like a safe link, uh, smart, uh, safe link, free phone, things of that nature, usually you automatically get redetermined with Mass Health. But again, we do have people who are not going to fall into that. So I just want people on the lookout for it. Um, most people are being notified by mail in a kind of robin egg blue color envelope, and it. It's very plain looking, but inside it will basically just tell you, you know, what the information they're going to need is. And we are encouraging people that if you've had any income changes, but especially any address or contact information changes, to contact Mass Health directly ahead of time. Because unfortunately, in my experience, we have had people, um, not necessarily Berlin specific, but in my career, I've had people lose mass health coverage because they couldn't get in contact with you to confirm your address or mm. confirm your identity and your demographic information. And it's, it's awful because we, we don't want to see anybody ever lose their coverage. So just a general disclaimer for that. Um, in the, so during May and June, I participated in SHINE training. So SHINE is uh, basically, it's serving the health insurance needs of everybody, and it's a national program that is aiming to help provide education and helping provide resources to people, mostly targeting seniors, but can even be without, um, who you know are trying to figure out Medicare processes, A, B, C, D, as well as other public benefits as well. Um, so I am currently pending exam and hopefully pass and then I can become certified as a SHINE counselor for open enrollment which will be October 15th to December 7th um, and you know then I can answer just general questions or any other kind of enrollment questions that come up um, you know throughout the year so but I know October is going to be a very interesting time and we tend to get <laughs> slammed I tend to get slammed with calls at that time and um, at least now I can actually tell people hey you know I've technically been trained so um, <laughs> I will tell people we are having a presentation at the end of September just talking a lot about Medicare as a whole and just what are your different options not that shine nor is this presentation going to be telling people what you should and shouldn't do because each individual person and their needs are going to be different so we want people just to have the options and just kind of be aware of you know these are your different options that you could be facing but I think a lot of people don't realize that there are penalties that you could face if you enroll late or if you have non-credible coverage for certain things and it's not necessarily well published out there unfortunately so I think I think the word is starting to get out there more proactively, but unfortunately, it's still very, it's not as transparent as it should be. So I wish I we, knew all this, you know, when I was signing up. Exactly. Yeah. Like, and um, so that's part of the reason why we have, there's Shine Counselors out there. So it's just, the program itself is volunteer based, but obviously because I'm here, I'm, you know, a worker for it. Like I'm, you know, worker for the town while doing this program at the same time. So. Mm -hmm. um, so I suspect that come the fall, that that's where a good chunk of my time is going to be. Um, Kristen and I applied for a digital literacy grant back in mid-May. It is through the Executive Office of Elder Affairs. And what they're doing is the state was awarded ARPA funds. And they are really trying to help seniors specifically get more literate in using any kind of social media and online presence. Um, a lot more of the uh, medical platforms as well as a lot more communication is done online and we have a lot of people who are very fearful about doing anything online so the thought is is to help try to bridge that gap um, so we have applied for $35,000 we will see uh, I believe that we're gonna hear back by mid to late July if we have been uh, awarded the grant and then if we have been will be awarded the funds I believe come mid August and then we can start going from there uh, we have about 15 months to get the program going because they need to have their application uh, basically final write-up done by the end of 24 beginning of 25 um, they are prioritizing rural communities and gateway cities, so there is actually a good shot that we're gonna get this money, but we just have to wait and see. Gateway cities are basically almost kind of like sanctuary cities or other cities um, that kind of have like a more okay. diverse population that are again, like trying to help bridge, um, you know, basically different 
like ethnic groups and things like that together. So they do. Lawrence. Lawrence, exactly. Oh, the, Springfield, the big Worcester. Ones that yeah. get all the money. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, but they also have a lot of need. So, Correct. and that's the that's the thing. So the grant was specifically focusing on gateway cities and rural communities. So we were highly encouraged to apply. So, like I said, we will see what happens. Um, we the grant that we had a the proposal that we had submitted basically put in for the request of grant pads which are basically iPads like you know tablets as well as uh, mobile hotspots and then we also had a budget for basically one-on-one -on -one classes as well as group classes to help teach people in the community as a whole um, the only the only feedback that they gave us though was you know if we get awarded the money we cannot make any modifications we can't change how we want to spend this funding so that's just the only setback with it um, but it's a very interesting program I'm very curious to see if we get it and see how fast we can get it up and running if we do well, so that'd be great so would you be doing all the training or bringing people in or we budgeted to hire somebody for okay. each of the individual um, for the classes as well as for the one-on-one -on -one sessions if you know we wind up getting volunteers or like a work off or something like that I, that that's fine I just we just had a budget for it because yeah I, I cannot do it so and nor would you want me to uh, <laughs> and then just to give a final update on the ADA grant um, so as you all probably are aware we had eight thousand dollars that we were awarded um, the money has been spent and all the projects have been done Kristen I have been uh, I have a proposal that's uh, pretty much done Kristen's uh, looking it over so we can get it submitted hopefully by end of week the eight thousand dollars included automatic door openers for the uh, two sets of doors downstairs we have three sinks that were replaced in bathrooms the two bathrooms up here as well as the handicap bathroom downstairs it is new ADA faucets that are pushdowns as well as new wrappings and new um, piping underneath because that was corrosive and rusting as well as for the main um, the main stall bathrooms grab bars hooks and uh, stall lock changes for those that needed it so how close did we come we are technically over $122 but we there was a line item transfer that was going to be done so we are good yeah. so yes yes we have <laughs> a little bit of money in public facilities we were doing a line item transfer anyways and it seemed to make sense to finish it out with that last sink since it was small amount of money to get something pretty significant done so mm -hmm. great you're ready to sign up for ADA grant. You you did a lot for this, far more than I anticipated and expected. I am forever yeah, grateful. <laughs> you know, you know. Unfortunately, you were the one who was here all the time. So, before we think long and hard, and honestly, if this is something that we want to try again for in August, I'm happy. But if yeah. not, and I've burnt you out, I'm okay with that too. I think the thing with <laughs> the ADA grant is, I think, um, and I've talked to Kristen about this. I think it is worth applying for every year to get this funding because you have nothing to lose. Yeah. I I suspect, based on Berlin's size, that we're not going to be. You know, if we put in a request for one hundred fifty thousand or two hundred thousand dollars, I don't personally think we're going to get it. No. But I think if you, you know, if we are able to submit a grant that says, you know, like if we're awarded thirty thousand yeah. dollars, here's what we're going to do. If we get twenty thousand dollars, here's what we're going to do. I think if you kind of give them that level of detail and just say like hey we've got these other contingency plans plus now between the electricians the plumbers mm -hmm. and now we just know generally speaking the shape of this building as well as other buildings from the CMRPC reports and everything else I think we now actually have some data that goes with it so yeah. that's really helpful um, so I think it is worth um, worth pursuing and you know we'll see what happens from yeah. there well the ninth thing is that we have the cost I think this yeah. past year you and I were just like finger in the wind <sighs> Oh, it's one hundred and fifty dollars yeah. for the door, yep. you know, and then eighteen hundred dollars later, we're like, oh well, we missed that one a little bit. Um, so we've got the data to say exactly doors are going to cost, you know, to get into fire and police, and to get into the bathroom, and to get those other doors open, yep. and then all the other bathrooms. Yeah, so. and I think we did. I think we did a good job of prioritizing what projects required the, you know, that were going to make the biggest impact yeah. for like a. I think we did a very good job as well as like, like these a lot of these are like one time projects like we're not going to have to go and you know hopefully not have to replace like the door openers again for a long time or you know like you know hopefully not going to replace a sink mm -hmm. or something like that so I think we were able to really spend the money wisely and just try to get the most bang for our buck um, we did have a senior work off person who did do a lot of the handiwork so mm -hmm. we're very thankful to him because Correct. that also helped to get a lot more done I think in a very efficient manner um, that we could not have gotten done otherwise. Agreed. So, 
Um, I just wanted to give you all just a general update. I, I have heard from UMass Boston. They are working on the um, town survey. They wanted to know when, they formally like to do like big presentations for the communities that they have done these reports for. So if there's ever any questions, comments, concerns, as well as um, just giving just general feedback of like their practices and um, how they maneuver things. Uh, they are looking to do a presentation for the town. I had suggested them probably like early fall time, like maybe September-ish, because I think if you try to do something in the summer, people are on Come vacation, on. so I don't mm. I, I don't know how much of a turnout you're gonna get. Plus again, if you do it like September-ish, you can get, um, we can start posting and you know making people aware of it. Right. Just to give you just some key findings, um, they're still working on the final project, but they just wanted to send over some key findings. So, um, as of now, they were, uh, they had sent out 1,094 mailed responses to seniors 60 and older, and that the survey was open to everybody 18 and older in the town, which was 2,877 people. They got back a total of 519 responses. Half were done um, online, and then the rest were returned by mail. So, um, good turnout. It's about 21%, which is pretty, like, just about, like, a little bit higher than their average um, of response rate. They so they believe that based on the current population data of Berlin that by 2030 um, 1,482 residents of town will be at least 60 or older um, and they're thinking that 35% uh, of the population is going to be between 60 and 79 while the rest of it will be 80 and older. Um, so that's very interesting to hear, very interesting to think about as we plan. Um, so. As of right now, like I said, they're just finishing up the report as a whole. Um, so I just wanted to let everybody know. Um, and there seems to be a good response rate from seniors, which is which is great as well, because I feel like sometimes seniors don't always necessarily feel like they have an easy forum to get their voices heard. And um, they're reporting that about 84% of the responses that they got were from seniors. So wow. it's good news. Yeah. Um, so. I don't have too much more from what the <coughs> findings are at the moment, but they just did want to um, make sure that that was um, conveyed. There was an uh, article in the Community Advocate, the one that Shrewsbury's in, uh, and it talked about that survey, so I thought of you, and it said that the majority of the concerns were housing, and yep. I'm thinking, well, that it's wasn't too hard to figure out. So UMass, uh, UMass Boston actually had a, um, a report out through NPR a couple months ago that for seniors, Massachusetts is the most expensive place for seniors to live, um, especially for the senior population, especially for low-income seniors. And it's not, you know, unfortunately and fortunately, because we have so much going for us here, it's also a very hot commodity, and there's just not enough housing going around. Um, I know that a lot of the big push that they were talking about was just trying to find housing that would be multimodal. So, for example, like duplexes or apartment complexes or things of that nature where it would house more than just one particular family. Um, and, you know, unfortunately, costs are going up with everything, um, you know, in all various areas, and aid has not necessarily been able to spread as well as it had been previously. So, it is a big concern. Um, but I do think. You know, hearing, like I said, I think once the town gets its formal presentation, it will get its formal write up um, in talking about like all of the concerns that were mentioned by the town, you know, by the residents, whether it is housing, whether it's transportation, whether it's, you know, socialization, whether it's, you know, gathering places, things of that nature. I think it will be very interesting to hear, you know, what Berlin has truly had to say. So. Yeah. So, will you, for the shine, um, are there other communities around us that also have? Sh I'm going to call you a coordinator because I can't think of anything else yes. to call so, you. Yes, so, yeah, so other cities and towns have had it. Um, Hudson did have a Shine counselor. I believe that they still are there, but because of the demand that they've been getting in, I think they've really been having to focus in on Hudson. Um, there is a lady who was in my class actually is in Clinton, so it will be another person because the I believe that the Shine uh, that the Shine counselor that they had left, so there was a hole there for a while. Um, the program that I was part of, they divided out by basically geographic region. So we're part of the Central Mass Shine office and there are about, there are almost 80 communities that are being served by that office. So their bandwidth literally goes from New Hampshire down to Rhode Island. Wow. Um, so they, and then the main program is housed in Milford, but um, they 
there, there are shine counselors all over the all over the state. Um, so can you share? Like if you get swamped, can you go to another town? And <laughs> yeah, so basically what we have to do is once certified um, and people call in for me, I would be doing you know either in-person meetings, I could be doing virtual meetings, phone calls, emails, whatever. And then we send out tracking um, to them. Like there's an online database that they have to track everything because that's how they also get their funding in from the federal programming. Um, but I mean, if we're getting swamped or, you know, if something else happens, I can always call the main office and say, listen, like, you know, I'm being bombarded or, hey, listen, like this one has a really difficult thing. Um, you know, it's out of my wheelhouse or there's, there's ways to do it. Um, I believe that for the Central Mass area, there's about, uh, I want to say there's about maybe 120 to 150 volunteers because there's only wow. a full time, there's only staffing for about four people. So that's all that the money really allows for so they're really really heavily um, dependent on volunteers so if anybody out there wants to be a shine volunteer <laughs> please let me know no. um, because it, it's a wonderful program but they're just there's not a lot of funding um, and you know in uh, other states they may be called ship counselors they, there's different names for it <coughs> this is a nationwide program they just again from Massachusetts it's shine but you know we all learn you know the basics of you know Medicare, all of the different you know pros cons of it, and then you also like at the state level are learning about Medicaid, and then again what other public benefits are available to you. One benefit, I guess, is that Massachusetts has actually a lot of really interesting options that a lot of other states don't have. Um, you know, depending again on health insurances and you know what somebody may qualify for, we do have more options than I think a lot of other states have. So. I, I don't want people to fret and think that, you know, if they don't qualify for this one particular program, that that's it. Massachusetts does have more of a spectrum, um, and that is a benefit. Um, but, you know, again, each person and each individual situation is a little different, so you just have to see how it goes from there. Well, thank you. And I will say it again. I don't know how you found us or we found you, but I am grateful every day that you were here. Before you run away, okay. I just wanted to say thank you very much to you and Peg on the ADA grant. Um, as we've learned, the smaller grant is more difficult oh because goodness. when you have a larger grant, you hire a contractor who has all of the plumbers, electricians, subcontractors that do all of those little things. But having to actually go and seek them out yourselves and find them, thank you both very much because I know that's a huge undertaking. And now you have the you know, you've kind of done the hard part yeah. in a way, you know, <laughs> if you're game for doing I, it again. There were so many things I, I had no Didn't idea. Learn we're like right. a mini contractor now. Yeah, seriously. I <laughs> you should go for your construction your supervisor's license while you're at it. Well, you know, I mean, I'll have to talk to the husband about that one now. <laughs> well, you know what I mean? The whole point behind this, too, was to take any additional work off of Fred and Company. We did. You know, which we did. We did. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. we dragged him to a few meetings, and then I think he, he bailed on us because he was comfortable. Um, with yep. us so that yep. that was the intent was not nope, to the load final, it to him. The final sync was done on Friday and Fred was like nope it's fine you can supervise and then I only had to ask him one question and then we were done. So it was great. Yeah hey and I just used to take the ink off my hand so very much like the for 10 seconds it was nice and warm. There you go. So well done. So thank you. Thank you very much. Um, something else too that Kristen is going to bring up I think in her report tonight is uh, we were talking about some like potential socialization and some potential initiatives I think here with um, openness to the, with the community and just some potential volunteer opportunities. We're, like it's just in the talking phases as of right now but Kristen will explain why it's really important but I think uh, socialization is now that we're past the hard times of COVID and um, you know we're hopefully heading continuing to head in the right direction um, I think that we can now just try to focus on doing more I think for socialization and for mm -hmm. just involvement with the community I've as a always whole. found that Berlin you know I think people get involved in things because mm -hmm. they need the socialization I am all for it and yeah. I think I think there's a big misnomer out there too that socialization means that you've got to commit so much you know time energy and you've got to be out of the house per se and we know that there are a lot of people who you know for uh, for safety and just for their own comfort at this point like there are a lot of people who choose to remain more at home but just because they're home doesn't mean that they still can't be involved like right. I know that we know we do a good job right. with zoom meetings and things like that and we want that kind of feedback and I, I I think also to the digital literacy grants going to help with that if again we get it because it does allow us to really teach people how to use various platforms and how to safely navigate online um, and you know give the opportunity for people maybe to connect in a way 
you know, that they may not have previously thought to do, so. Have you spoken with anybody at the school about this literacy? Um, so at this point, no, only because I want to see if we get the grant first. Um, yeah. The plan is, you know, like I said, if we if we do get picked for the grant, we'll know sometime in July. And then if uh, if we're up, if we are picked, we should be getting funding sometime in August. And then I would suspect, you know, once that point in time comes, it's then back to school season. So yeah. you know, then we can really start reaching out to um, to BMS and especially to because Hunto it just might be interesting to talk together with their literacy specialist. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, again, like if this is something that I think, uh, you know, an interesting component to this could be too is like a multi-generational approach. Mm -hmm. um, you know, other towns have had, you know, funding already spent for uh, digital literacy. So there was like, there's some towns who are like, yeah, we, you know, we helped them figure out how to use TikTok and Instagram. And then, you know, some people wanted to learn how to use Zoom so they could attend meetings. <laughs> and then, you know, then you had other people too, like, Especially for Medicare and Medicaid um, and a lot of other doctor's office portals as well. A lot of this stuff now is shifting online and it's so much faster with, uh, and, it, and honestly, people are getting their answers faster by going more online. So I think if we can help people figure out how to safely navigate these portals and this new way of communication, mm -hmm. I, I think it will also be beneficial in a, in a sense as well, knowing that, again, you know, you can get your information faster, you can submit questions faster, and get more instantaneous feedback because, unfortunately, um, a, lot of, a lot of agencies now are having problems trying to find staff for phoning or for other yeah. kind of scheduling when, you know, they're dealing with uh, employment issues on another side. If you need help with the portal, let me know, because that's all I do at work. We call it the patient experience portal, and it's just that. Ask a question, pay your bill online, refill my medication, yeah. download information. So if there's anything that I can do yeah. to help. No, I appreciate it. I think a lot of it's going to really be, you know, just the basics. You know, we're going to have to figure out, you know, again, the grant kind of what like where is everybody on this spectrum like what do they feel comfortable doing um, I know when we were doing shine training they were trying to really encourage seniors to get a <coughs> medicare.gov account just because again like for example if somebody has a lot of medications they can technically save that information on their personal medicare.gov portal so that every year when they're looking to see what the new part d plans are going to be or new medicare advantage plans are your information's already there so it saves you a step um, and then you can figure out okay you know you know, pharmacy meds plus pharmacy plus, you know, other factors. And then, again, it gives people, I think, a more accurate representation of what your options really are. So. Is there, like, a big portion on scams? Because they're just yes. wicked. Yeah, we did have a fraud. We did have a fraud um, presentation about two weeks ago. And the amount of cyber attacks that are going on is, is continuing Horrible. to be rampant. Um, I, it's not going to stop. We, we get the calls in. I know police gets the calls in. Um, they're getting more crafty, and it's it's scary. And we do have a write-up about this in the Powder House, um, talking about you know we've had people call saying that they've gotten a phone call from this from this durable medical equipment supplier saying, hey, your equipment's ready to go. We just need you to confirm your Social Security or your Medicare number. And then it's like, no, like I didn't know my doctor didn't order anything, and you know things like of that nature or the the nice like family scams of like, oh, your your grandkids in jail and you need to wire us 25 grand to help get them out of jail to prevent, you know, as bond and all this other stuff. And it's, it is terrifying. Um, it, thankfully in Berlin, we're not hearing as much about like door to door scams because there are some municipalities that are dealing with that as well. Um, and our houses are too far apart. <laughs> no, they <laughs> still walk it. We've got people, people at the door. So, uh, I would say, you know, like if anybody ever has any questions about this, please, you know, reach out to myself or to public safety. You know, we want to make sure that I, I don't want to, you know, pers I don't want to dissuade anybody from ever going online. Like I don't want people to be that fearful, but I just want people to be mindful mm -hmm. of, you know, like here's how you can tell. And, and I think these classes, like that's part of what the digital literacy is going to do too, is like more individualized. Like here's how you tell if a website is safe, secure. Here's right. what information you should be, you know, here's what information you can be providing on these, you know, specific websites and why versus... There were yeah, there were else. some um, online testing that we all mm -hmm. availed ourselves of, so would yeah. be, which would be interesting and helpful probably for seniors who are just starting to get online. Yeah, and I and like I said, I think 
a lot of times, you know, the the forgeries are getting real good. Um, mm. You know, and again, like a lot of people have like Amazon accounts or they may have eBay accounts or they may have a lot of social media accounts. And again, like, you know, you may be looking at something and just thinking, oh, it's just my bank giving me an update that my, you know, that my monthly statement's available when it's actually, you know, now a virus if you're, yeah. if you're not careful. Yeah. Um, so. Well, I, I wish you a lot of luck with that. that it's going to be important and you are working on so many important things yeah well you know i mean you know hopefully i can plan like a trip somewhere at some point so you know we'll, we'll <laughs> with you. It over she's the always on a cruise go with her see she'll look yeah. <laughs> so i mean like i said we'll, we'll know more about the grant um you know like come july i i do hope we get it and i do think that like i said i do actually think we have a good shot of getting it and you know part of what they wanted to know as well is how would we sustain this going forward and i think you know Part of the COA formula grant, I think, could be spent towards it. But I think even, too, like if the town, if we were able to show that this money, you know, was able to do so much already, and I think, you know, again, the town could potentially, you know, also try to fund it to, again, just keep the upkeep of it going. Um, and we do have a lot of seniors coming in, and we have a lot of younger seniors coming in, so they may not necessarily be as fearful, but I just want to make sure that, you know, everybody can basically do what they need to do online. Yeah. So. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much. You're the best. You. All right, you're going to call my husband and tell him that in 10 minutes. So. Okay. <laughs> All right, I can do that. Thank you, Victoria. You're welcome. Thank you. <coughs> All right, uh, moving on to the town administrator report. All right. One thing that's not in the report, but I wanted to mention because it's pretty exciting. You may have heard by now that um, there is a new director of rural affairs uh, as part of the Healy administration. Hmm. This is very exciting because as Victoria was speaking about, um, gateway cities have a strong need. They traditionally have priority um, in funding applications, um, but a lot of times rural communities are overlooked because their needs are different. So the criteria that's set out for cities, obviously a small community is not going to meet that criteria. Um, so one of the things Governor Healy did was create this new position, um, which is the Director of Rural Affairs. Their goal is to cultivate, uh, her goal will be to cultivate economic development in rural communities and ensure the governor is attuned to the unique needs of these types of towns. Um, for those of you who don't know Ann Gobi, um, she's more well known in Southern Central Mass. Uh, she actually was a former teacher at Leicester High School when I went there back in the day. Um, and then she became elected to the legislature in 2001 and became a senator in 2014, uh, representing 22 communities um, in Worcester and Hampshire County. So she served as the current Senate chair of the Agricultural Committee. Um, and the co-chair of the Legislature's commis Commission on 21st Century Farming. Um, she co-chairs the Rural Caucus Food Systems Caucus, um, Transit Authority, and a number of other uh, entities that are going to be really beneficial. So I'm really excited. She actually came to the small town administrators meeting over in Boylston uh, last week to make it known that she wants to help our small towns. Uh, so it's really great of her to show up there. So we're, I think it's gonna be a great opportunity to have her there. One of the other things she is tasked with doing is looking at all of the state grant opportunities, including Community One Stop for Growth to ensure that barriers to rural and small towns are mitigated. So that is going to be huge because communities um, of our size are often completely left out of these grant opportunities. Mm -hmm. So just really excited about that and wanted to <coughs> share. Um, I'm also really, really pleased to report that the FY22 audit is complete. Uh, it has come back with no findings and just a couple of very minimal procedural recommendations. The firm principal actually said it was a pleasure to work with such a well-run town, of which I can take absolutely zero credit for because I was not here during FY22 at all. I will turn my attention this way and thank the entire administrative finance team in June Poland <laughs> in particular. Um, for all of the processes and policies that have been put in place over the years to result in such a great audit outcome. So thank you, June, and thank you to everyone else who worked so hard on this um, audit. Um, I wanted to give an update on the Barnes Hill Road. Uh, heavy vehicle commercial, commercial, sorry, heavy commercial vehicle exclusion petition. That's a mouthful. Um, so the state does have to authorize these types of exclusions on town roadways, and there are a number of thresholds that have to be met. 
The first is a traffic count showing sufficient volume of heavy commercial vehicles. The Central Mass Regional Planning Commission has kindly agreed to assist in gathering this data. Um, they will be working on this in the upcoming weeks and should it support moving forward, we'll move on to, the next step would be gathering an engineering um, study. So once we have that traffic count information from CMRPC, that'll come back to the board for a decision on whether or not to move forward with an engineering study. I was just going to ask, I guess I could ask at the end, but oh, I'll ask now, um, whether you could send an update to Jack? I did. Oh, good, good, yes. good. I actually uh, I kind of promised Jack. him that we would do that. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I, I did. I sent it to Jack and asked him to... I actually sent it by email so he could yes. disseminate it out to all of the folks who were here at the last meeting that were interested in learning about that process. So Good. Uh, we went back and forth with some questions a couple of times and it's kind of an interesting process that they use. Um, so we'll see how it uh, goes. They'll be letting us know and I'll give you a heads up when that'll be happening. So it should be either this week or next week. Okay. Unless things get tied up. They've also been doing traffic counts for the 495-290 ramp. Mm -hmm. um, traffic that's coming through town so they're in this area anyway so the timing happened to work out perfectly uh, recreation court so the Lazaro has installed some riprap material on the pond side of the court um, to stabilize the area they actually did this at no cost to the town um, which we were thankful for but there was a little bit of miscommunication there and that we hadn't actually told them to go forward with it they just went and did it um, <laughs> the good news is it looks great conservation I know Carolyn has been away but she's going to go out and take a look at it as soon as she's back um, but Fred has been out there to look at it as well as Bob Holmes who is an engineer um, and it does actually seem to have tightened up the area and addressed that erosion concern over there uh, we will need to keep an eye on it to see if we'll have to do eventually a, reten a retaining wall at that site, but for right now it looks pretty good. Um, one of the reasons you haven't seen a lot of activity over at the courts is the paving requires a three-week curing period, um, which was uh, Saturday. So we are expected to get underway again, and they've been putting in the posts and everything for the nets and hoops. The fence so is up, though. moving forward. I didn't even see that. Did that go up today? I it's don't know when. It was up over the weekend. Went up over the weekend. Okay. Great. Looks great. So we're moving. We're moving forward there. Um, we're also moving forward with the municipal office's flat roof replacement. Um, they are actually going to be on site tomorrow, bringing in some building materials. And I've connected them up with the air handler folks to confirm that the location of the air handler and the roof will all match up with the wiring and the gas and the footprint of the air handler and everything looks good there. Um, the air handler should ship on or around July 5th. So as soon as we get that, and if you recall, we ordered that at the beginning of January. So that has been an extensive lead time on the air handler, but um, they are coordinating so we can move forward uh, with the roof. And good news on the municipal facilities reuse plan. I'm finalizing um, the RFP for this. Um, basically, as we've talked about, it will hire, it'll be a request for proposals. So a consultant will come in um, and they will meet with us and just, you know, we'll talk to them about what we're looking for, which will basically be to look at existing conditions of buildings, identify, prioritize, and estimate the cost of capital improvements for town buildings, and make recommendations regarding vacant and underutilized space. So it's um, basically an RFP, which a request for proposals. We're going to be evaluating the firm on what they come to us and tell us they can do. Um, and I would actually like to request that I have one board member help sit on the review to evaluate the um, request for proposals, if someone would be so inclined to review the proposals. Because it's much more of a complicated process than an IFB, where it's really price driven and you check the references and if you don't have anything bad, you go with the low bidder. This is more qualitative in that we have to look at their proposal and what make sure that what they're offering us is really what we want um, in terms of the facilities study. Okay. So um, that's not going to be due until July 19th. The reason I gave it an extra week was with the 4th of July holiday. I didn't want to have it due in two weeks and have no one bid on it. So, right, right. So that's something we can talk about too at our next meeting. 
um, somebody would be interested in sitting on that. I'd like to have at least three people review that um, RFP. I think Fred would be the natural third person um, to have go through those as well. Um, Victoria hinted to it a little bit. The Municipal Office's Senior Greeter Program is sort of the name that I'm piloting out here. Um, Victoria and I have talked a lot about kind of socialization and some of the things that have come up through the gerontology study. And um, I've been talking about kind of, you know, the need that we have for people who come into the building and do this. And I see it every time <laughs> I come out of my office, um, downstairs, upstairs, you name it. So we were talking about maybe piloting something where we could have some folks volunteer to serve as greeters down in the lobby for a few hours, Monday through Friday, during our high foot traffic hours. Um, we could potentially try to tie this with some senior work off opportunities and give a friendly face to help residents quickly and easily locate the services that they need. I think the challenge is when they walk into the lobby and you look to the right and you have those um, uh, tinted windows where the public safety admin sits you can't see always that there's somebody there and then they go upstairs and it's you know sometimes we don't have the town clerk always open there's not someone directly at the window at all hours so I think this might be kind of a helpful thing because I know we talked about signage but what's better than having a friendly face to kind of help get you in the right direction so looking at that um, community garden fence came in uh, two quotes we're reviewing right now the low quote is just under 37,000 there are some questions that need to be we need to go back to the contractor and ask to make sure they've included everything um, but we are working on that piece of it and the Agricultural Commission has been reviewing the two bids that came in uh, radio project we've put out the scope for the installation of the radio antennas at the cell sites to those for uh, uh, several of the firms that are on that list to see if it's under ten thousand dollars and we can just go with the company or if we have to actually go out and do a whole scope of work and the quote process and the advertising process so this initial kind of ask will give us a clue as to whether or not we can move forward without a full-blown basically procurement quote process um, another thing that happened, um, Lowell got hit with a rather uh, nasty First Amendment audit um, a couple of weeks ago, and um, folks didn't know necessarily how to respond to it, and it escalated in some certain situations. Um, so one of the things we talked with the department heads at our meeting were, were how to handle First Amendment audits and showed some examples of how they've happened in other communities and ask them to share some materials I provided with their employees as well. And I'd like to eventually put together some type of um, more, like a larger training. And Carol Costello and I were talking about that in case they showed up at central office, which they have less access there because there's student records, but they still can come into the main part of central office at a school too. So um, it's all about just de-escalating and staying calm and right. giving the best service you would give to anybody else who comes into the building. Um, but uh, they, they want to know, like, is that your first cup of coffee today? <clears throat> and on a scale of one to ten, you know, one being, you know, you got to sit the DMV for five hours, or ten being you're on a cruise. What's your best day ever? You know, what, how how are you rating today? I mean, they they are asking a lot of personal questions, and some people got really annoyed and just kind of have to think of it as you know your quirky uncle who you know you're hanging out with that asks a lot of questions and it's best to just kind of answer them and roll with the punches and not get annoyed so um, that's the best thing you can do um, I also spoke with Susan Strait from the UMass Amherst Donahue Institute regarding the inaccurate census data that uh, she had mentioned on Berlin's population projections that we were the fastest growing small town in Massachusetts, which unfortunately is not true, uh, or fortunately maybe is not true. Um, we are actually going back and working with the building department on um, getting residential permit data from 2019 to the present so that we can actually do a challenge to their population estimate program. Because 2018 and 19 were large years for us in terms of residential building permits and they just took that number and multiplied it over the next several years. And so that is why, um, you know, assuming we had that level of growth every year thereon. Um, and the last thing I'll mention, sorry, I know this is a long one. Um, uh, we had the opportunity to go to the Neshoba Valley Chamber of Commerce 
and meet with a couple of state agencies that do like public-private partnerships uh, and provide resources for development, reuse, and energy upgrades. So um, the Solomon Pond Mall and River Bridge, actually we went out there and had some great conversations with Mass Development and the Mass Office of Business Assistance and talked about some possible programs we might be able to work on with them. So I know that was long-winded, so I'll leave it again. Yeah, that's all right. It's a lot going on. Questions? Just a few? Well, it's a long report, so I expected that. <laughs> um, Maplewood. When yes. they were here, they asked for a specific amount of dirt that was brought in, and you had guesstimated. Do you have a specific tonnage or however dirt's measured in? How is dirt measured? Um, Cubic so ton? Do you mean how much how much they brought in? How to much date? has been brought in to I date? I can get that from DEP. When I got it from them back in March, I believe they had brought in about half of the. I think they had brought in 139,000 of the 300,000 that they anticipated using. Now that is an estimate though, just the, the 300,000 is an estimate too. So, okay. but I'll get an updated number for you. All right, thanks. Yeah, I know that yep. that was a big question um, on that. Um, open positions, didn't know if you had any updates on the search for our building commissioner, police, and your town assistant. Um, this fall? Yep, so the uh, building commissioner, we did post. I received one um, <laughs> response to date, but it is a building commissioner. How, um, how long is it open for? So we did it open until filled with priority okay, given good. to those who applied before June 30th, mm -hmm. so to try to make people move. Um, building commissioners are probably one of the hardest positions to hire next to a treasurer collector. Um, maybe even harder so I'm gonna keep a uh, keep an eye out rich and I are coming up with a strategy of how best to address this but yeah so far just one um, police I'll have to touch base um, with chief to see where he's at with that and I'm still on hold at this time on the admin in our office okay no, no, don't. Uh, no, hang on. Um, last time we met, we talked about the open finance positions. I know that they were, everyone was extended to June. But then as of, oh, Sunday, Saturday, um, you're going to be down a couple slots. So what yes. is the appointed person who is responsible for finding those positions or reappointing people? What is he doing? <laughs> um, short of carrier pigeon, I'm not entirely sure how else to get this uh, done. Um, I have called, emailed, spoken in person. Um, Barry has let me know he will be reappointing Julie Malik, um, and he just hasn't filled out the paperwork with uh, Luis. I actually tried to physically pair them up in the building um, and get that accomplished, but that didn't happen. Scott Schultz has been calling. Julie Malik is actually going down to 19 Carter tomorrow with the form to try to get it signed. Um, I think so. Isn't um, just is Scott Schultz aware? Yes, that he's he been can, calling Barry. No, I mean that oh, he I'm can um, appoint if it isn't done within a certain length of time. Um, that we actually had not discussed, so let me make sure I have I know a Scott with has him about dealt that. with that before, so you know he may okay have more information. I on think that. they were trying to do it the the proper channels or yes, the, the official know. channels, if you will. But um, I will let him know because they are planning to meet again on July 10th, if need be, to finalize any last minute FY23 items. And so. if anybody's out, they have no quorum. Correct. Right. So when do we step in? Because we can, per your TA thing that I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. Hold on, I'm looking for, for like 90 days. Yeah. Oh, excellent. Hang on. Um, Mary, are the FinCom terms up June Yep, 30th? it says uh, recommended, recommended individuals to the board for appointment to any open position in town if the authorized appointing or hiring authority fails to fill a position within 90 days of the vacancy so September we don't have do we have to wait 90 days no I, I don't know but that's what the line says is that if the authorized appointing or hiring authority fails to fill a position oh, within, oh, within 90 within 90, 90 days so okay you have ability to okay fix that so that we do not get into so that's a another bind. alternative I guess Mm -hmm. 
All right. Uh, Scott does have the ability under the FinCom bylaw. Is that what allows him? Ask Scott Hawkins about it. Okay. He will. He will know. I think. Let me. Do, I let me do a little digging into that. I think it's in the finance committee handbook. FinCom handbook. We had to do it recently. Okay. So you had mentioned Kristen. Oh, where did you go? Um, Continued work on fourth modification to River Bridge Development Agreement. I will say few words except when is this going to be done? God willing, we kept tomorrow. thinking it would have been already, <laughs> yeah. but it's not. So, I think, are, do we have a tentative meeting for Wednesday? We do. We, we have do. a meeting for Wednesday. Um, do you have a time? 10 a.m. is what I've proposed. Okay. This is um, it's becoming it's becoming difficult in terms of the negotiations, and I think we need to probably look at taking a different route, and whether that route involves an outside negotiator, um, that may be the path that we need to take because right now we're going on two years of taking five department heads time yeah. to sit here and do this yeah. it's, not, it's not worth and our time not, anymore it's not working nope so. we're just so getting we'll, wagged yeah. around yeah okay um you also mentioned about the recommendations for the audit i read through and yeah they're teeny tiny um so again june congratulations to congratulations. you um so for those recommendations who does that fall to for taking care of those and getting them done so I don't know how you've done that in the past. My recommendation when we get together is the administrative finance team and discuss those uh, recommendations. We're in a little bit of a weird situation right now because we have the assessor leaving, so it probably would make most no. sense to bring the new assessor on board. And then as we start to get into later summer, early fall, have an AFT meeting to discuss all of those. I was going to say, I know one of them we're working on. We just can't check it off as being done. So it's already in progress. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that someone was on yeah. it. That's oh, yeah. all. All right. And the other questions I have will come up in your future stuff. So um, that's it for now right. for you, for the TA report. Okay. Thank you. All right. Is there anything else, Kristen? You think you got it? You covered it? <sighs> I think so. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. That was like the world's that's longest okay. TA report. There's a lot going on. Um, so we'll move on to new business and the FY23 line item transfers. Okay, so we have several line item transfers. These are all within the budget. Um, some are actually within the same department, but these are not uh, reserve fund transfers, so we're not going outside the FY23 budget. Um, I don't know how, do you want me to do them one at a time? Do you, okay. Um, I'll start in reverse of how we did it at FinCom because that's my pile here. So the first is a request for $8,000 for unemployment insurance. The current balance in the account is $8,459.58 and the transfer would come from o excess funds in Chapter 32B insurance. <coughs> so this basically would cover the quarterly unemployment payment to Maya. Um, it's really hard to budget unemployment when you're sitting down a right. year and a half, not a year and a half, sorry, six months before the fiscal year starts. So that's basically just to cover that excess and we have it within um, the health insurance line item to do so. Look at those signatures, they're horrible. Mary Janet Julianska. I like Scott. the hot pink one personally. <laughs> mm. Who is the hot pink one? Scott. Really? <laughs> yeah. By process of elimination, that looks like <laughs> Julie with a J, so that's Scott. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Do you Yeah. You want her to go through each one? Yeah, I'd rather go through each one. How many are there? Uh, I believe there are eight. One, two, three, four. Okay. Or six. I mean, I went through them. Or six. Before. Looks like six. eight. Before the meeting yeah. on the, yeah. the so Google you do, Drive. 
Um, yeah, the only one that I really had a question on, Kristen, was the fire expense and why did we miss the grant and who missed it and what are we going to do because we can't keep going to the well because our well will run dry. Fair enough. That's actually the next one I had here. Okay. So um, that's actually a transfer from an interdepartmental transfer from fire EMS wages part time. Sorry, it said expenses. It actually should say wages part time to fire and EMS expense. So it's a June 30th deadline for submitting the grant reimbursement for this reimbursement grant. So we haven't missed getting the funding for it. It's just the grant deadline is after and they had to come out of expenses because it's a reimbursement grant. So Chief can actually speak a bit yep. more to that process for you. So in the transition of me taking over and Chief Clark, I believe that's probably where the biggest mistake came in that was made was that I knew we had grants that were out there and I thought they were already, they were given to us. These ones being reimbursements, I've gone through the FEMA Go website and mass uh, the, the D DFS department and stuff to actually start submitting the paperwork to get them done. Um, so I just submitted one for, I think it was $2,700 last week, which starts the process for us and stuff. Um, and I'm gonna work on the other ones that we need to give that or give the paperwork for and the receipts and everything for the radio project probably being the, the biggest one that's outstanding right now. Um, so I don't anticipate that we're going to spend a total of $31,000 on it. Uh, what I did is I met with June just to go over a worst case scenario for all the grants that if we miss some of them or didn't pay them and stuff, what would be the easiest way to close them out? What money would we need to do that? And that's kind of, kind of where the $31,000 came from. Does that kind of describe that accurately? So um, I, I anticipate that we'll probably be in the $20,000 range, but it was just the worst case scenario. So the grants weren't submitted yet, but you still have time to submit them. Yes, but yes, then, So this is just money that we need to pay in case the grants don't come through. Yes, what happened is, is the money to pay the grants, it, it, it kind of came out of the general expenses, if you will, um, okay. and they need to be reimbursed. So now I don't have money to pay the other bills that I currently have that are due. <laughs> But we will get okay. that money back. Yes. So whereas those extra right. expenses in your budget would have flown to free cat or flowed to free flown, flowed to free cash, we will get the grant money back. Okay. Just because the way that it was written, it said that re reimbursement grants were not submitted, and I'm thinking, well, who missed that one? Yep. So, but now with your explanation, it makes sense that you're playing catch up the rest of the week. Correct. Okay. All right. Any other questions, Craig? No, that was the big one that I. All right. I had. It's kind of like the, whoops, here's the late bill from last year. Yes. Can we fork well, over I money? Had, I had kind of gotten an explanation, I think, from either you or Kristen on it previously, so I, I had understood. Yeah, and it's a lot easier when I'm filling it out, but it makes sense to me. Yes. It's just not going to make sense to anybody else. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you're here. <laughs> <coughs> okay. All right. Do we need to make a motion then to... Uh, approve the FY23 line item transfers. Do we have a total? Or just did say. Did you say six? Well, there no, it's total money, or do you oh. just want there are six? Just six. Just six. Just six. six. As presented. Yeah. All right. Minutes. So I will make a motion to accept the six FY23 line item transfers. And I will second it. And what I just need is um, the date of today's meeting and you both to sign down in the bottom left of those transfers. We can sign them after the meeting. So yeah. We can get Do you, the date? Today. Oh, up above. Yep. Yes, I see. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, so I seconded it. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. Okay, all in favor, say aye. 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 All right. And when we did this agenda setting, I kind of forgot that this was the day that Scott wasn't going to be here. Mm. And so, um, I actually might didn't remember till I saw him not sitting there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and and I I did remember, but um, when we did the agenda setting, I did not remember. Um, so, do you want to just briefly go over it, or do you have questions for her on behalf of the goals that? Okay, all right. My only question, Kristen, um, I, I'm used to doing SMART goals, which are specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and um, irrelevant, rather, and time-bound. Okay. So there's quite a few on here. Um, is this the order that you're doing them? Is this, 
you know, what are you giving yourself for a date? Is there anything that rises up to the top for the modification of River Bridge Development Agreement yeah. or Berlin Memorial Lease School? Um, I can certainly put them in an order. Um, I figured as it was a draft, we'd have a little yeah. discussion about it. Um, yes, I have to tell you right now, getting River Bridge done is literally at the top of my list because before that it was town meeting and yeah. then the fire union negotiation. River yep. Bridge was kind of hanging on third mm -hmm. and now it's now it's at the top. Um, and you know, a lot of these, the ARPA projects obviously are a priority because they have to be done by December of 26, but that's actually into FY27. However, we can't wait that long because a lot of them are construction projects. And some of these are already started. Mm -hmm. So with the supply chain issues and everything that's been going on, it's a little bit difficult to give dates. I mean, I can give estimates and then we can update them as we go do you yeah would that work yeah i mean well, that's what i'm thinking like the high like priority the, yeah, like priority the, right the school lease because that's been kicking around forever yep. one the other one that i refuse to mention um you know soil importation could be taken care of by our new law people yep. you know public radio so i think that there's almost like a flow to to some of these and then in the ARPA projects it's like who's going to do the website updates, you know, to look into that. Who's going to look into the server upgrades and the document scanning that, you know, June and Amy mentioned at our last meeting? Because I know things happen. Yep. Things get busy, you know, and it's not like I'm going to sit here and say, well, Kristen, you said that this would be done by Monday. It's Monday and it's not done. But it's at least this might give an idea of, holy crap, something caught on fire. Oh, I shouldn't say that. Something happened. I uh, <laughs> probably shouldn't say that either. Things come up that will impact this right. but just so that there's yep. a flow of sure hot hot and well it kind you of know goes down. one of the things we talked about when we talked about goals was just the fact that we should do this yearly yep. so if if this is some something you think that you can accomplish in a year which would be it's a lot. I mean, I'm not going to say all of these, especially the ARPA projects, may not all be finished within FY24, but they are all going to be started in progress and hopefully done, the ones that can be in 24. Um, these are all the, I mean, I actually have a three-page <laughs> list of projects. These are all of the ones that literally rose to the top, and I can definitely try to put them in more of a priority order priority order. deadlines yeah. and mm -hmm. grants and you know all and of that you may have run into date issues with supply chain the supply chain there's also i i have to tell you too lately we we've had a <laughs> an inordinate amount of unanticipated um interruptions interruptions we'll say yes um there's been some you know personnel matters that have been really important that have taken a lot of time that we've needed to address so you know the the day-to-day -day and you know me being able to keep my office open for department heads especially whenever they need to come in and be there is really important so whatever comes up there shifts kind of what i'm working on too mm -hmm. so but if this list seems to encompass what's on your radar in terms of those big projects, this is what's on my radar. Um, if there's anything missing, let me know. Otherwise, I will put it into a more structured format. For the, is Scott back at the next one? Or yes, he's missing so, two. yes. He's that's yeah. Just he just missed. He's just missing tonight. tonight. Okay. Okay. I can definitely do that. No, this will be good because Kristen, when you come back and you can say because of unintended consequences, I am something's got to fall off the list right i have this down here do you agree yeah it slides till next year we can be like oh, instead of mm -hmm. you know kristen this yeah. isn't done um you know type of thing sure okay that makes sense to me all right all right so, so we'll put we'll that back on the right. um july 10th agenda then as well july 10th that's the birth of my firstborn. Oh. <laughs> Can't believe we're going to be after the 4th of July. Yeah. All right. All right. Anything else before we move on? Those are good. Okay. Then next thing on the agenda is the Rockwell apartment. The revised affordable unit rent schedule. Yes. 
So we work with um, Stephanie Peterson over at Metro West Community Development. Um, they're connected to the ASABIT uh, housing consortium that we work with. And they actually went through and reviewed the rents to make sure they were in compliance with the state maximum allowable rents um, in terms of existing tenants and the new move-in rents as well. So both are in compliance with state guidelines. The current tenants would be increased to no more than 10% um, and the schedule is provided to you in the packet, but based on Metro West's evaluation, it meets all of the state HUD guidelines and they noted they were appreciative of keeping <coughs> the current tenant rents increases to no more than 10% because they could have gone up higher. Have we had any feedback from our housing consortium on this? That is, that's so that's Stephanie. who Stephanie's okay. with our housing. Okay. Yeah, they, 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 I forget how it works, Mary, is that they farm it out they, to they Metro are, West? They are a hired consultant for the Asset Housing Consortium Thank you. Communities. Okay. So but the committee that Scott's on? Oh, that committee. That um, committee. So the, the Housing Trust, I thought, dealt with more of, of the town putting units um, or the town developing, like, affordable housing. Am I? Well, like, like a trust that it, it's kind of hard to they, explain. They have not defined where the trust and the partnership begin and end. Hmm. Well, that's a good question. But they question, don't have then. that role historically because they have only existed recently and they're formulating their path forward. They've well, it was, I them. think it was, um, I want to say it was begun because we didn't want to lose our affordable housing. Mm -hmm. What was begun? Uh, the, getting that, involved that in this housing authority. There's funding that has come into the town that for affordable housing. Is, is that what we're talking about? They manage that funding, correct? Right. It's a very, very inexpensive yeah. and quick turnaround professional take. And by them going through the first hoop and then you being able to rely on that, it's going to be, we've already knocked out a lot of it before it goes to DHCD because it requires town and state approval for these affordable rents. Mm -hmm. So, and also knocking this out before the meeting, unlike what happened last year. Let, when yeah. was left with own devices. To last year, you remember that we told them, no, you, you know, you have to come back. So yeah. this has yeah. already been done this time rather than having yeah, us tell them that. Well, and to your feedback. point though about who does what, um, the planning board actually got in on a grant through the Central Mass Regional Planning Commission for a housing coordinator. So we're going to be getting, I believe it starts this summer, um, four hours a week of a housing person. And one of the things that I wanted to talk to Tim about was having them take a comprehensive <coughs> look at all of this and figure out you know, who's doing what and have that person kind of look at all the avail all of the available funding sources and kind of shepherd and guide us through this process. I think that would be really helpful because right now it's sort of like a little bit over there mm -hmm. and a little bit over there, and I think this person could help manage all of that, which would be great. Tim is Tim is um, also monthly going to the as Asabet meetings yep. with Stephanie, and I think does she chair it? I think she does. Yeah, she I, did. I went to the meeting last month. Okay, well. yeah, I've been to the meetings also, but um, he's been the one that's been meeting with everybody else in the other towns but I'll regularly. Follow, yeah, I'll, I'll follow this. up with Tim, too, yeah. on that. I didn't expect to see it in any <coughs> of the information. I don't know if it's relevant, but it's more of a curiosity. So are those apartments full, and is there a wait list? And do we know the number of school children that are in those apartments? So in according, to, according to the last census, there were 11 or 12. Mary, do you remember what Ellie said? I can't remember if it was 11 or 12. Kids. Now that's the, yeah, that's the census that, that Ellie does. Pre-K yeah. through 12. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, waiting list, I don't know. I can certainly ask. No, no, it's fine. I just didn't know if you knew off the top of your head. I was looking for that specific information, but as I said, did not anticipate that I would find it. Yeah. I, uh, my understanding is that the apartments are full. Okay. 
Well, I just want to make sure, because if you remember when the apartments went up, the uh, big thing was, oh, we're not going to have any impact on the schools. Oh, I know. So I just want to make sure that that statement of many years ago is still holding true, even though they have a bus stop right outside. So. Well, they do need a bus stop. Okay. All right. Okay, cool. All right, so we need a motion yes. to... Uh, confirm the affordable or to so a motion to um, approve the <laughs> suggested increases on the Rockwell apartment revised 2023 schedule for affordable unit rents and I will second that motion good because I can't repeat it <laughs> 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 all right um, all in favor aye, aye. And uh, now we have the dissolution <laughs> of Earthworks Advisory one. Committee and hiring of consultant to review earth import export permits. Okay, you can explain All that right. one. Huh? I'll give you a quick overview. I met with the chair. The chair said he was willing to stay on. He could not speak for other folks on the committee, but they are an advisory committee. So they don't meet until they get a permit. Right. We now have a permit. It came in last week. My thinking, and I know we don't want to get into any additional expenses that we don't have to. However, we already have a company set up that is reviewing soil importation matters for the town. These are not permits that we receive that often. So my recommendation would be to just, when we get that soil permit, have the consultant look at it because I'm not a soil expert. I don't think the board is a soil expert. And I get the, I'm getting a, a bit of a, some of the members are interested, some may not be. We have a building commissioner who's leaving and that's where I get a lot of my input from is on the building commissioner side. So, I mean, they're an advisor. The Earthworks board advises on those permits. The permits are issued by the select board. That's the way the process works right now. If they're not going to take action on it, I'm not comfortable necessarily recommending to you all that you take action on it either. I would rather have an outside party review it. So, so are we talking about Weston and Sampson? That would be the, the ones. Okay. I mean, it could be another one, but we are, do already have that set up. I, I, you know, but I'd like to, like you did with the audit, I'd like to see if there's anybody out there. Yep. Else out there. The uh, permit that you had a question on, um, did it have to deal with Sawyer Hill? Because if not, then yes, it did. Okay, all right, good. Now, wait a minute. No, on the only, well, it, it came up in a CONCOM meeting. Yes, the that there would been be, out there already. That there would be a request for additional soil importation. To the Sawyer Hill? No, no, not not that Sawyer Hill. Oh, Sawyer okay. Hill, go past Brewer Road, the uh, where the horse stables are out there. Oh, that's right. right. Okay, gotcha. So that, that well, we've received the application, okay. so it's now public. Okay, it's a, now a public record, so it's well, it was in a public meeting and it was recorded, so it right. was kind of sort of already public. It, exactly. So that's I, my meaning. We can speak about it. Yeah. So it was for an import of fourteen hundred. No, it's twenty two hundred. Oh, she upped it to twenty two. Okay, twenty two hundred. Oh yes, tons yes, so for an now. indoor horse yep. arena. Yep. Okay. Obviously, just want to. And is this, is Weston and Sampson, is that the, well, that type of a group, is that what we need to make a decision like that? So they're licensed site professionals in addition to being engineers. So licensed site professionals deal with environmental contamination. Um, they deal with soils. They deal with any type of environmental reviews that go along with anything. So they would be checking the soil that someone wants to bring in, just like they are doing now. If if it's if necessary, if it's necessary, it, we'd have to look at the permit and see what it requires because there's certain thresholds within the bylaws and what have you. So we still need to work on the bylaw, though. We do. Okay. Yes, that's next week, Jan uh, July one. Yay. We have our new firm. Mm -hmm. so. Oh, don't right. worry. I have that on the radar. For good, next week. good. So, Just to offer, it's yeah. not the, the soil. They'll be looking at the paperwork. Yes. You're right. Yeah. Not the soil. That's correct. 
That's what they do now as they look at the paperwork. Higher degree of review than what the volunteers can do. And they turn it around in four days for maple work, so they have the same kind of turnaround rate. Okay. My only concern is I'm not a soil expert, and I don't want to pretend to be one. <laughs> and and that's kind of why we put together this Earthworks Advisory Group, because we're not soil that's experts right. either. Right. Well, that so you have folks on there, some of which are departing, um, one at least of which who's willing to stay on. Um, I, I could tell you there's probably a second who would be more than happy to help, but I get the sense that I don't know if there's the specific expertise in soil there either yeah is right. my concern mm -hmm. yes there's certainly expertise in construction um for sure but the soil matter um you know that's the tricky part of it so mm -hmm. we can we can recon my other suggestion i had made at the previous meeting was we can reconstitute the committee for one year while we do the bylaw process but I think we could do that through public hearings. And I mean, I as I mentioned to the chair the other day, I think that soil review ultimately should go through planning board or conservation because I think those are the land use committees. That's really where a soil permit should be issued from ultimately. And you do that as part of the bylaw. And you'll see when we rework the soil bylaws, most of the towns that have it have those issued as part of a planning board or a conservation review process. Because it goes along with all the other permits that those boards issue. And could this be sort of a temporary thing once we get the bylaw up and running? It it could change. Right. I'd have it change as part of the bylaw. I would I would have it put in place who would be the regulatory right. authority as we update the bylaw. So the one that I worked on in my former community it was the planning board. Like the select right. board and the planning board helped draft the bylaw, but ultimately once it came down to the like nitty gritty of who manages the actual permits and reviews them, and then planning board also has folks that can look at it too. Uh, you know, they they have consultants that they work with, or it could be conservation. It can be one of the other, one or the other, rather. Okay. So, questions? Mm -mm. I mean, I feel I feel Is bad. Is this what when we want to do? Yeah. It, well, um, they sat here two weeks ago and said that they had expertise in that, and this has been another can that's been kicked down the road for multiple years, and we had KP Law come back and draft something, and that sat and went nowhere, and no one took action to it, so... But do you have questions as far as dissolving earthworks? Nope. Okay. And hiring this consultant? It would be just on a case-by-case case basis. Yep. And right. I, I mean, how, I don't know that we get them very often. We, you know, it goes in spurts, but you know, lately it, it has hasn't been. No, no. I do like the idea of a, the town having kind of that expertise on it from the beginning, since there have been concerns Issues. about mm -hmm. soil importation in the community as a whole. Yes. So, um, I mean, I have no problem with this um, if we want to move to a motion. That's fine. Uh, so I'll make a motion to dissolve the Earthworks Advisory Committee and hire a consultant to review earth uh, import export permits on an as needed basis. Okay, and I will second that motion. Anything else? Mm -hmm. Okay, all in favor, say aye. 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 <coughs> okay, um, we've sort of re uh, named this section about uh, board questions on agenda <laughs> items. And, and basically it's agenda items tonight or mm -hmm. agenda items for the future. Mm -hmm. And then liaison updates. Yeah. Um, I had two very small ones. Uh, giant shout out to Phyllis Tower, our animal control officer. Uh, we had an animal issue over the weekend. You, you personally or? Oh yeah. Oh, oh, oh yes. Yeah. Um, I call, I looked up Phyllis' number online, called, um, she did some research for me, got right back, so she was extremely responsive and helpful. So um, thank you to Phyllis for all that she did. And then um, have you had a request from CONCOM to come meet with you? And then I'll tell you why. Yes, me, yes. to meet with Chris and myself. Not, not the same request? Regarding the Verizon Tower? Yes. Okay, so my question is, during that meeting, 
there was a comment made by a board member that unless they were paid $75,000 a year for rent, that they would not go forward with it. So I'm kind of curious as to A, where they got the number, B, do they have the right to get that number? Yeah, uh, who is asking for the $75,000? A member of the Conservation Committee, because the quote was, uh, we will need that $75,000 a year so we can buy more land. Okay. Uh, and if you'd like the time, it was at the 33.53 time limit of the meeting on the 14th. I mean, there were comments later that, yes, this needs to go before the board and there is a process, but I just was like, even the guy from Verizon was like, uh, we're not going to pay that. Is that maybe what we're going to be discussing? I th I'm just going to listen, really. I know we're discussing cell towers. Mm -hmm. That's all I know. This yes. is a good piece of information. It's a good have. piece of information. And there was also discussion. And I'm kind of glad that you're still sitting here. Um, <laughs> Aren't you glad? <laughs> uh huh. Was that uh, Verizon had made the comment that they would need to widen the road to about 20 feet to get a 4x4 four four in there in case they needed to get to the tower. So if they're asking for that, then kind of thinking you can couple it with your request for public safety to do the other ones. So of course, you know, there was the comments of, uh, it's about a, they said about a 50 by 50 um, area of land that they'll need for the tower. So that's really, that's what, 250 feet, 2,500 feet? 50 by 50? 2,500. 2,500. So it's not all that big, um, but that, and then Verizon said that they would do a 25 year lease um, on that. So if you do the math, it's 75k a year. If that number even floats, it's like over two and a half million dollars. So the question was, does it go to them? Does it go to the town? <laughs> do they get a portion of it? Because there was also a comment of, uh, we need to make it worth our while. Where does the cell tower intend to go? Snake Hill. On town owned property? conservation property like somewhere uh, in the back okay that's what i that was the piece yeah. that i was missing somewhere in the back because they had also talked about an additional piece of property as well that if they had to expand there or go there that there would be an additional couple hundred thousand dollar cost to verizon to get be able to get in there because there was the question of are they going to put up a fence because it was oh look we'll have another road and people will be able to ride is bikes it, up is there it, and is it uh normal to negotiate um, as I mean, as far as the person putting in the cell tower to pay the town, I could that's something that they're private, so yes, so this could happen. This, this, this however, is, they're talking about wanting to actually acquire a piece of property that is land acquisition that requires town meeting approval. Okay. I don't, do they actually acquire it or they just use it? Even a lease of town-owned property is still acquisition. So that still does require town meeting approval. I mean, the yes. Verizon guy said that 75 was a little high, that they may be able to do half, but that's all negotiation. It depends upon the other companies that want to come in besides Verizon to hop on the tower. So, but I... I mean, unless conservation land works seventy five grand than a year to, to buy more land. It's an interest in land. It's an in, it doesn't okay, matter whether it's conservation or not, right? Well, we no, because it's it's all still town owned property. Right. So that's they any, just any manage interest it. in land is considered acquisition, whether it's and you would have some type of lease to have them be on that piece yeah, of property. Yeah, it wouldn't be purchased. though. That's, it would that's be leased. Not, that's not yeah. for that's town meeting, and that's. I mean, I know it's conservation land, but like you said, it's ultimately town-owned land, so that lease would be negotiated by the select board, and it would go to town meeting. So before you meet with her, if you want to fast forward to the 2556 mark, okay. that's when the two gentlemen from Verizon have a seat at the table, and they start to chat. Okay. Thank you. Will do. Ote. Okay, tell me that again. I should look to. 2556 mark on the June 14th meeting for CONCOM. 2556. 56. That's when the Verizon meeting starts. 
and at the 3353 time limit when when there was a request for a 75,000 a year so we can buy more land. And the date was June 14th. All right. Let's see if I can Just want you to be prepared. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. I'm going okay. way back now cuz I think it was, was 2014 that, your liaison we report? <laughs> that was my liaison. No one else <laughs> meets. <laughs> And when now that Earthworks is gone, I'm down one. So yeah, I'm um, I'm good. Okay. That's no, all. No more questions, even, or about agenda items or anything like that. Oh, don't you worry. Well, now you can save it for next time. See, don't you worry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I'll just tell you that <clears throat> this meeting that I was going to tell you about is from the 14th of June. So it's been a while, but it was right after the last meeting we had. So they had a hearing, they continued the hearing for 10 Bigelow Road, um, parking requirements for an R&D facility. Um, ZBA is looking for CONCOM approval to go over the wetlands for additional parking if they need it. Yeah. And it was continued to July 12th. And then they also had 8 Highland Street um, they approved the ZBA approved a detached garage, um, a variance for the side setback. So, just a busy group there, and that's all I got. So, with no need for an executive session, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. We will adjourn and sign those documents. Yes. And so I will look at that and everybody say aye. Aye. Aye.